Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us for this FIG mentoring program, the um, orientation meeting for the pilots program. I am Kodna Obiensiyama and I'm the chair of the FIG Yang Severs Network. So for today's program uh, lineup, we're going to have a welcome from um, Professor Jenny Wetter from the University of Cape Town, who is the um, who is, was the chair of the FIG African Regional Network and now a director of the FIG Foundation. Then we also have um, we're going to have the um, program design by me, and then Professor Wetter will come back with the expectations for the program. Then I'll come back with the dates and then. Uh, how the program will run uh, will be given by David Elegwede from uh, Nigeria. Then uh, we will look at Roshni will come in with the skills development and then we we'll round it off with uh, CPD and again with uh, skills development with uh, me closing the program. So let's, uh, I look forward to a very exciting uh, afternoon for me personally and hope it's exciting for you wherever you are. So uh, I'll, then, I'll now welcome uh, Professor Wittel to give us the welcome. Welcome to all, all mentors and mentees. We're so pleased that you responded to the initial call to take part in our pilot mentoring program. We are sure that this will be a memorable journey in which you'll make friends and learn along the way. This pilot program is for African region only. It's a collaboration between the FIG Young Surveyors Network and the FIG Africa Regional Network with strategic and concept conceptual support and also intellectual property from the SSSI Mentoring Program in Australia. We've come a really long way since the incubation of this project in 2016 FIG Working Week in Christchurch, where the concept of the mentoring program was first discussed. Since then, the Young Surveyors Network of the FIG has developed concepts and materials and the FIG Africa Regional Network has identified that this was a cross-cutting need in Africa. The Surveying and Spatial Sciences Institute, or SSSI in Australia, has been running a successful program since 2018 and has provided huge support to us, encouragement and intellectual property to our program. This has brought us to this opening orientation session today. With about 50 or so participants and only half as many pairs, obviously, the selection was highly competitive. The huge interest in the program both from those wanting to be mentors and mentees is testament to the need for this and also the willingness to give back in Africa. It's very encouraging to us and will help us to develop a sustainable program with more participants in 2023. So now it's time to introduce our program committee team. Please will you introduce yourselves first of all, Kwabena. Thank you very much, uh, Jenny. I am Kwabena Obin Isiyama. I am originally from Ghana, currently residing in Germany, and I'm a lecturer and a researcher at the Leibniz University Hanover and a lecturer at Kiel University um, Kumasi, Ghana. And I'm, I'm also the um, chair of the FIG Young Civilians Network and the chair elect of the FIG Commission 8 on Spatial, uh, Spatial Planning and Development. Thank you. Thank you, Kubena. So as Kubena has mentioned, my name is Professor Jennifer Wirtel. I'm a lecturer at the University of Cape Town, where I lecture in geomatics. And um, I also am the outgoing chair of the Africa Regional Network. And I'm handing over to um, Mohamed Maman Kabir, who hopefully is in the meeting. If you are, welcome. And we look forward to engaging with you very much more in the near future. And so I'm handing over to him quite shortly. And uh, I'm taking up a position as director of the FIG Foundation, which is very exciting. But I, I won't be dropping this program. I think this is, this is really such an exciting program and I look forward to continuing with this team and expanding the team in the next year as we really try to scale it up after this small pilot. So thank you for being here and I look forward to the rest of our meeting together. And I'll hand over to, um, who's next on the list? I think it's David. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, I just had to adjust my internet connection. My name is David. 
I'm Elegude, and I'm based in Nigeria and the vice chair for the Young Service African um, Network and part of this um, committee. It's good to have everyone here. I'm happy that we're starting this and I hope you enjoyed this section. Thank you. Roshni? Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Roshni Sharma. I'm dialing in from Sydney, Australia today, and I'm really, really excited um, to be able to have the opportunity to support um, this incredible network in Africa with the learnings from the Triple SI Mentoring Program, which I founded in 2018. And it's really, really exciting to think about um, the impact that skill development and mentoring will have in Africa for capacity development and capacity building. So I really hope you get the most out of this program and I'm just so excited for you. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. And I think, um, David, you're going to introduce the last member of our team who's not able to be with us because he's traveling to a remote part of Nigeria. Yes, um, that, that is um, um, Olumide Adewebi, he's the uh, um, Managing Director of Joseph Nigeria Limited and also um, the Vice President International for the Nigeria Institution of Surveyors, which is a member association of the FIG. Personally, he couldn't attend, he would have loved to be here, but because he's on an assignment and he's in a remote area, the network will not avail him to make it. So he sends his greetings to everyone and wishes everyone well. Thank you. Back to you, Kwabena. Yeah, thank you very much, Jenny. So um, I'm now going to talk about the program design, the overall program design of the um, pilot. So um, when the emails were sent, you found out that um, ev uh, everyone everyone got a user ID within the emails. And this is where you find the user ID in the emails. And these user IDs are supposed to be used when you are communicating with us on, um, uh, anytime you are communicating with us in anything relating to the mentoring program. Um, I kind of skipped some of them. So the program, uh, the program itself is a collaboration between the FIG ARN, that is the African Regional Network, and then the FIG Young Surveyors Network. And it's, um, it was kind of conceived separately uh, amongst, uh, within each of these bodies, and then we came together with our ideas. But then our ideas to get to fruition had uh, needed some support to get there. And so we were quite, uh, fortunate and lucky that we were able to get the strategic and conceptual support as well as the intellectual property of the SSSI mentoring program, which was um, founded by Roshni Sharma, who is uh, with us in this, uh, in this meeting. Now, this is all done under the auspices of um, FIG. So um, this is, that is why this is then uh, dubbed the FIG um, pilot mentoring program. Now the mentoring program is meant for uh, African, uh, for African young surveyors and seasoned surveyors. And uh, this program is going to last from March to August, 2022. And we will discuss the plan within this, uh, within this period shortly. But in a nutshell, the program aims, to, aims at engaging the youth, leading to their integration into, their, into our professional and workplace structures, providing them with opportunities and to promote resilience in the profession. Now, it is hoped that the lessons learned from this pilot program will lead us to uh, to develop a more sustainable and accessible program from uh, next year, that is 2023. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Jane. 
So um, next up, we'll move to Jenny to talk about the expectations from the program. Thank you, Corbena. So let's briefly look at some expectations and what you can expect to find in the program and what you should not expect the program to deliver for you. So the program is not designed to enhance your technical skills. There are many, many other ways that you should be able to do this, for example, by following MOOCs. It's also not designed to secure you a job placement, but it's about developing as a professional and clarifying your career pathways, for example. Other expectations relate to how we communicate with each other. So mutual respect is key to a successful program. Aspects to consider when showing respect, especially in the online environment, are the following. So listen actively, don't engage in other activities when in a mentoring session. Affirm the other person. If you feel that you have something negative to communicate, use the positive sandwich. Say a positive thing, either side of a negative thing. Serve each other as much as possible. Whether you're a mentor or a mentee, you're serving the other person with things that you share in these sessions. And be kind, show care for one another. An aspect of respect for the other is communicating clearly and in good time. This is particularly important when setting up meetings or arranging to have them rescheduled. Another aspect of respect is being on time for your sessions. For both mentor and mentee, time is often in short supply. It's really important to prioritize the sessions and schedule other activities and traveling so as to be on time for them. The program is free. There's no expectation of payment in money or in kind between participants or between yourself and the organizers. What should you do if either party oversteps the expectations of the program? Please contact us as organizers if you need to do anything to let us know in, the, in such a case. The contact details will be given in the communication with you immediately after the session by email. Corbena, could you take us through the key dates? Of course, thank you very much, Jenny. So um, with the mentoring program, as I mentioned before, this is going to last from um, this is lasting from April to, um, to August. And this is broken down into three main parts. First is the um, mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring meetings, of which they are going to, we are going to have um, five of these after this one. Then we have the joint meetings, such as what we have right now. And for these ones, we're going to talk about um, general issues relating to mentoring. And uh, there will only be two of these, one of which we are having now, and then the next one will be at the end of the one-on-one -on -one mentoring period. Now, with the one-on-one -on -one mentoring period, each one is going to be for two week sessions. So it's going to be from um, within April to the middle of June. And then after that, we will expect that, um, that mentees will submit their, their um, short report that they are um, required to. Then at the end of the program in, on 18th of July, there will be uh, the, the feedback submitted by the mentors and the mentees. Thank you very much. And so um, David, can you uh, continue to tell us how the program is going to run? Okay, thank you, KB. Yeah, um, how the program we run is very simple. We've we'll tried to understand some of the issues that might come up and what would be easy for everyone to, to manage and get along with one another. So the first thing is, um, how do you set up the meeting and what platform? Actually, um, within your peer, the, the mentor is expected to take responsibility for setting up a meeting and you are at liberty to choose which um, of the platforms you want to use, whether it's a Zoom, MS team, WhatsApp video, whatever it's convenient for you at the convenient time within the dates that we had um, set up, you can you are free to, to do this. Then um, sh should you make records? What do you have to do after each meeting? It's very simple. All you need to do is um, to fill a Google form which will be made available to you. You need to complete the, the, the Google form and um, at for each of the topics that have been discussed, and this will be 
done by both the mentors and the mentees. Then um, the meeting dates, the, the start time and the end time, and um, who attended the platform used has to be filled in to the Google form and submitted to us after you are finished. It is would advise that you submit immediately after you, you have finished the meeting so that you do not forget to, um, to do that because it's so easy to forget after some things come up for you. Then um, another question is what happens when things go wrong? Um, would, who can you contact if things aren't working the way you had expected? Um, you don't have to bother yourself too much. You don't have to feel bad about it. In most cases, sometimes we do not get what we expect. And um, sometimes also there are cops what such as illness that might happen, which might be beyond, which might be beyond your, your control. So all you need to do is to um, let the organizers know about it, send in an email and then let us know on time, at least within the first two weeks of the meeting circle. It's so easy to know if you would be able to continue or not, so we can make um, interim plans where necessary. Um, again, what to do if you then miss a meeting? Um, we advise that you try to arrange your sections at the start of two weeks so that um, you are well informed on when you will be meeting. It helps you to plan your time. Um, then you can always try to reschedule and make adjustments within the time frame that you have to make sure that you, you meet at appropriate time and able to get back to us also. So um, then because the mentees and the mentors might not know each other, so how do you build a working relationship between the, uh, between the two, the peer? Um, we'll be sharing some ice, um, break out questions that you can use to you can use in the first section then at the time you meet yourself you can use the questions to get to know each other better and get to get along with each other um, there's a there's a key card that's available that would be shared um, to everyone both the mentors and the mentee immediately after um, this meeting uh, it will help it will be like a guide for you and to serve as a guide for you to be able to carry on both mentors and mentees should please read the key card and the topics so that they would understand. And if they have any questions, they're free to send in a mail so that we can answer them ASAP. So I think that will be all for how the program will run. Thank you very much. Over to you, KB. Thank you, David. So um, from here, we're going to move to the skills development, the first part of it from uh, Roshni Sharma. So Roshni, please go ahead. Roshni, I don't think we can hear you. Thank you, Jenny. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Great. Um, so thank you, um, Corbina and Jenny. I was hoping to give a little bit of information briefly here about some of the learnings that I've seen from the Triple SI mentoring program over the last four years. And so um, there are, I guess, three points that I'd like to say about how to be a good mentor. Um, Firstly, I would say that as a mentor, one of the most powerful things that you can do is to ask questions. And so if you are, as a mentor, asking questions around um, how you can guide your mentee, it can be useful to consider the difference between an open-ended question and a closed-ended question. So a closed-ended question has an answer of either yes or no. An open-ended question asks them to think a little bit more deeply and it can guide them by opening opportunities that they may not have thought of before. So one example that I've um, just written here is that um, a closed-ended question might sound like, have you considered a career in hydrography? An open-ended version of that same question might say, 
I'm hearing that you really enjoy working outdoors and you're very interested in the natural environment. You also like to travel. Would perhaps a career in hydrography be something that you could think about? Um, that way, you're showing that you're listening and you're prompting your mentee to think about new ideas. The second tip that I would give is as a mentor, it can be extremely powerful to tell stories to your mentee about your experiences. Telling stories showcases to them that you have been in similar situations to what they're facing now and you did not just magically happen to be who you are today. It's been a journey to get there. Um, that helps them realise and feel more comfortable with the fact that careers take time. They're composed of multiple jobs and multiple volunteer opportunities and it's okay, there's no rush. It also lets them know that there might be other possible ways forward that they haven't thought of yet. The third tip around being a mentor that I would provide is it's important to not tell your mentee what to do. Rather, you're in a unique position where you can use your experience to guide and help them to think about what their options are that they may not have considered before and to help them uncover a path that will work for them. While suggesting things for them to think about is useful, telling them what they should do is not. In terms of the tips that I would give for a mentee, I would say that the first tip would be going into a conversation that you have with somebody that you likely don't know very well can and probably will feel quite intimidating. That's very natural, that's very normal. You can make the experience as useful for both of you as possible by preparing beforehand. So, um, that could include reading the topic key card for that particular topic, reading the handbook that we will send you the link of by email very soon, and perhaps doing some of your own research about that topic or about your mentor, see what you can find online about them. Have some questions prepared for them about what their career journey has been, how they got to where they are today, what their goals for the future are, or what they've learned over the course of their career. So curiosity is really powerful. Sometimes you might find that you cover a lot in your meetings with your mentor. So the second tip that I have is it's useful to schedule in some reflection time immediately after your meeting or within the next few days. This reflection can take the form of whatever you're most comfortable with. Whether it's speaking with a close friend about what you've learned without breaking confidentiality of the things shared within the mentoring relationship, obviously. Or it could be journaling dot points about the key learnings that you've had and actions that you want to take or drawing a mind map of things that stood out for you from the conversation if you're more artistic, whatever is meaningful for you. Documenting what you learn along the way can be a really beautiful tool when you come to the end of your six topic journey with your mentor to see how far you've come because that will be very rewarding in that moment. The third tip that I would give is Remember that a mentor is there to guide you to consciously shape your own experiences, not to tell you what to do. They're able to walk alongside you on your journey, but the path that you take to choose, create and shape is yours. So think about how you can take their guidance and advice and translate it into action into your own life. Thank you very much. I'll pass back over to you now, Kopina. Thank you very much, uh, Roshni. So, um, and it was a very light, enlightening um, presentation talking about the relationship between mentors and mentees. And I mean, across, um, 
even minute cultural differences, this would always be this can always be a problem. So thank you very much. Um, so we'll move on to um, Jennifer Wetal to talk to us about uh, continuous professional development points within this um, program. Thank you, Kubena. And thank you so much, Roshni. I think you could probably hear Roshni's passion and experience for this coming through and it, what a delight it's been to work with her up to this point. Thank you, Roshni. So with CPD points or continuous professional development points, they're usually required by associations, institutes or councils all over the world. But each member association has its own methods of accrediting activities for CPD points. So you're going to need to speak to your member association yourself about obtaining recognition for this purpose. The organizers of this mentoring program will not negotiate this with your member association. If you've participated fully in the program, the organizers will provide you with a certificate at the end, and this will include a summary of the hours engaged in the program. And you can use that to take to your member association to get some CPD points. Thank you, Corbena. Thank you, Jenny. So, um, Thank you very much for that, for that enlightening information also, because CPD points is also a, um, an incentive to join the uh, mentoring program. So thank you very much. Uh, next up, we'll move, on to, we'll move on back to Roshni to talk to us about the second part of skills development. Roshni. Thank you very much, Kabina. I'm just going to share my screen and I have a short presentation that will tell us a little bit about generations in the workplace. So, bear with me while I share my screen. Are you able to see that? Yes. Yes. Right. Thank you. Wonderful. So I would really like to speak with you all today about generations in the workplace, because I feel like, especially with COVID-19, it's something that has changed the way that we work. As we know from the pandemic over the last three years, life as we knew it has changed a lot, and we're now transitioning into a new normal. Over this time, we've had adaptations, rejuvenation, and rethinking the fundamentals of what the workplace looks like and how we show up to work. Before I dive into generations in the workplace, I wanted to quickly mention a little bit about what the geospatial industry is. There are two sides of one coin being surveying um, and geospatial. And when we consider the FIG definition of a surveyor, it really does encompass all of these things very comprehensively. The two parts of our industry include sort of the more traditional surveying path, which is very well established and has a quite a strong sense of identity and heritage. And the boundaries of it are slightly easier to define clearly. When we look at um, analytics and um, mapping, cartography, remote sensing, we can see that there are some aspects of our industry that are rapidly evolving. They're very, very interfaced with other industries and the boundaries can be slightly more difficult to define. So, I'd like to explore with you a little bit about the different generations that we have across the surveying and geospatial aspects of our profession. When it comes to generations, there are five, maybe four key generations in the workplace right now. The most um, sort of popular two generations are the baby boomers and Generation X. So baby boomers were born from around 1945 to around 1960. Generation X were born from around 1961 to about 1980. 
There are, of course, also many of Generation Y who were born from the early 80s to about the mid-90s. And then we have Generation Z who were born after the mid-90s. So this um, particular image is um, obviously a little bit out of date in that it's a couple of years old, but the general principles still apply. When it comes to the aspirations of each generation, there can be a slight difference. Baby boomers can um, aspire to job security, while Generation X prioritizes work-life balance. Generation Y can tend to prioritize freedom and flexibility, and Generation Z, security and stability. Baby boomers tend to be early information technology adaptive. Gen X tend to be quite familiar with different types of technology and easy to adapt. Generation Y are digital natives. They've grown up and always known a lot of technology. And Generation Z use technology in every part of their life from a very young age. When it comes to different ways of communicating, different generations can value different things. If we think about many of our parents, a formal letter would have been what they found comfortable as a general um, stereotype, of course. Um, baby boomers can often prefer speaking on the phone or in person as opposed to Generation X who will be very comfortable with email and text message. And Generation Y are very, very comfortable and prefer online and mobile communication. Gen Z prefer taking this one level further with a visual component such as FaceTime or Zoom and Teams. And all of this can impact the way that we communicate with each other in the workplace the different things that we aspire to, the different things that we value, and the assumptions that we make. So I'd now like to spend a, just a small amount of time talking about how COVID has affected each generation in the workplace. When we think of the baby boomers, they were born in an era, era of post-war optimism. They have experienced a lot over the years. They've survived wars, social change, political upheaval, and more. Often they will find that, um, you know, the challenges that the pandemic brings is not new to them because of these experiences. And from a health perspective, they're generally at the highest risk of contracting and having a serious or fatal outcome from COVID-19 than other generations. When we consider Gen X, we can see that often they're caring for both their own baby boomer or traditionalist generation parents, as well as their own children. They may be facing upheaval in the workplace with uncertain job security or job future due to the pandemic and the impact it's had on jobs and the extra pressure that that places on them with their caring responsibilities can mean that they find that quite stressful. They may health-wise also have some degree of pre-existing health conditions such as asthma, diabetes, heart conditions, which makes them also at a risk of contracting and having a serious uh, outcome from COVID-19. And they're also likely to be juggling working from home or losing their jobs with homeschooling children um, and things like that at different stages of the pandemic. When we consider Gen Y, some of these may also have pre-existing health conditions and many millennials or Gen Y are experiencing the role reversal of now speaking and helping support their parents about the need to be careful and you know, be, protect themselves against COVID-19, which might be a role shift for them. They also deeply believe that the world can and needs to be a better place. So when it comes to getting by with low savings or the changes 
that they face with unemployment or anything like that, that can add a lot of stress outside of work as well. They often value flexibility in the way that they work. So working from home and not having the daily commute has been a novel and perhaps sometimes unpleasant experience because they're not able to get the networking aspects and the face-to-face -face mentoring aspects that come with being in the office. Some of them are finding that, you know, if they have been renting and they've lost their jobs or minimized their income, their housing situation is uncertain, which adds another layer of stress. And we also have for some Gen Y, travel, um, celebrating graduations and vacations and some of those milestones that they look forward to and have been saving for, that can be something that is less possible as a result of COVID, which impacts work as well. When we come to Gen, Gen Z, we can see that with various strains of the pandemic, it is quite possible for many of all generations, including Gen Z, to have uh, the ability to get quite sick from COVID as well. Often they are worried about friends and family, and while they're digital natives and very familiar with technology, they're still feeling the implications of the changes to lifestyles and society as a result of COVID. Mental health can be a significant issue for Gen Z, and this can be something that is hard to talk about, again, potentially impacting them at work. They might be worried about the future of their career, they might be worried about their inability to see their friends, to go into the workplace and have some of those mentoring and learning um, experiences. And because they're quite new to the workplace, they don't have the experience of what it's like to work um, pre-pandemic and also the networks with the people in their workplaces as strongly as the other generations, which can add uncertainty. So all of this leads us to think about new ways of thinking, adaptation and embracing change. Just as the Great Depression and 9-11 led to changes in how people live their life, COVID-19 is leaving a major mark ongoing on all of us today. Each generation is dealing with the psychological and emotional impacts that COVID-19 is bringing. And there are many cases where there are food insecurity, decreased access to education and healthcare, and the loss of family members due to the virus. As we move forward, our world is finding new ways. And all of this change needs to come from all levels and all generations. Linking back to this mentoring program, soft skills play a vital role in our future. When it comes to the pandemic, in the early years of the pandemic, we had the first time that there was global school closures and tertiary education institutions closing at the same time for the same reason since the Second World War. Vaccines have changed um, in some countries the way that people are able to live. And also now it's very common for us to know many people who get COVID at any particular time. We're also rethinking the way that we do education as a result of COVID-19. And we're rethinking the way that, you know, we are able to cater to the learnings of people across various parts of their career, whether they leave school and go into university straight away, whether they come into our industry from a different industry and want to learn and get education, or whether they're already in our industry and want to learn more. All in all, as we are realizing the impacts that have on the workplace, soft skills like creativity, Emotional intelligence, flexibility, and resilience are those that really help us to move forward to have better, more satisfying careers as individuals, but also 
to be able to have the most um, psychologically safe and productive, innovative workplaces that we can that allow us to have really good business outcomes as well. And so this program brings together the ability for us to share across generations soft skills from mentors sharing their experiences to mentees and also from mentees sharing the things that they are learning and the new skills, the new learnings that they're bringing about the latest technologies or having fresh ideas so that we can have the most um, fruitful individual working lives that we can and give back to our companies and the industry as best we can. So um, thank you very much. I hope you learned something and back to you, Corvina. Thank you. I'm not sure where Kwabena is. He seems to be a little bit delayed. So thank you so much, Roshni. That was a wonderful. Oh, there's Kwabena. Well, it's still, it was a wonderful presentation. Yeah. And I, I certainly learned a lot. Over to you, Kwabena. Yes, indeed, indeed. It's, uh, it's quite an interesting um, presentation, talking about how generations um, interact with each other. It's something that we usually overlook. Um, in certain places because we just think uh, that's how things are, but um, they do work in a certain way. So thank you very much, Roshni, for that presentation. Um, we, uh, we, we have about 15 minutes to hit the R that the meeting was supposed to last for. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the floor for anyone who wants to ask a question. Uh, to any of the presenters today in relation to the uh, mentoring program itself. And um, even for some of you who may be new to FIG, questions relating to FIG also. So please. Um, Corbena, there's a question about um, whether the slides will be made available, but I don't think the slides, the PowerPoint slides themselves won't be shared, but the meeting is being recorded and the meeting recording will be shared. So any participant can listen again to the entire meeting um, afterwards. That will happen, I would say, within the first half an hour after the meeting. We're expecting that email to go out with the, um, the link to the video and also um, all the documentation with the key cards that will direct you for every mentor mentee session and also the um, icebreaker the icebreaker questions and also in that document will be most if not all of the of the information we presented here so you'll be able to reflect on it in the written format as well if you don't have time to watch the video so there'll be multiple opportunities for you to re-engage with the material but even after all of that if you're still unsure please be free to contact us and we'll answer your questions. But are there any questions off the, on the floor yet that we can answer right now? Roshni says she's very happy to email her slides to the participants. Thank you, Roshni. I think it is quite important to remember that there is intellectual property here, so don't, don't send those on or use them without her permission. I think the other thing I just wanted to pick up on and highlight, Roshni did mention it, but just to highlight the confidentiality, it's extremely important that we treat everything that's said within your mentee and mentor sessions as highly confidential. Even if your mentor shares a personal story with you to explain or show how they've had some experience and you find that story very useful, even if you find that that think that that story might be useful to someone else, you're actually not at liberty to reshare that. It is said in confidence. Um, so please, you need to ask permission if you do want to reshare something with somebody else. Just ask the person's permission before doing so. Um, it's really important because of the, 
the relationship of trust that you have in that environment, it's very important that you just respect that. I might also add that um, it's really important to remember that in case something goes wrong along the way, if you find that something in your life has come up, that might disrupt your ability to participate in the program, please don't feel bad. Life happens. So at that point, please reach out to us um, in the handbook that will be emailed to you straight after this. There will be two email addresses that you can reach out to. We are always here to solve problems and work with you to find a way to make sure that you can get the most out of the program. So. If anything ever comes up, please do reach out. If there's anything at any point that makes you feel uncomfortable um, with your mentoring relationship, likewise, please feel free to email us as well, and we are always here to help. And if you or your mentor are at any point experiencing um, mental health challenges that might impact your ability to participate in the program as well, uh, while we are not mental health professionals, we are always happy to find the right people local to you that you will be able to talk to and get help from. Um, so we want to take care of you. Um, back to you, Corbina. Thank you very much, Rosalie. Very, very important information. Um, we have about two questions in the chat box, but then we also have uh, Dr. Mapale from uh, Botswana, the president of the Botswana Institute of Geomatics. So we'll go to him first and then we'll go to the questions in the chat box. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I had wanted maybe to, to request um, for clarity to be um, to be to be given um, regarding um, you know uh, uh, the, the the program itself. That is to say, um, when it comes to the mentoring, um, is it going to be? Uh, uh, um, I was not so clear whether it's going to be um, the mentor determining how we should proceed or how the mentoring process would proceed, or maybe there will be some guided uh, approaches to uh, regarding how, uh, you know, the mentoring uh, should be done, whether there's going to be come, something coming from you, the committee. And then, of course, uh, the yeah, I wanted to know whether you are going to be giving us a gu guideline information on how uh, things should go. That's one thing. And then I have seen there were some schedules which uh, were, were mentioned in there. I don't know whether also now when it comes to setting of meetings and so on and so forth, whether it means that um, it's going to be centrally done by yourselves or maybe uh, maybe it's a question of, okay, if um, there's a discussion or a mentoring, mentoring process that has to take on between um the two parties whether um maybe we can set time outside uh you know your 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 own uh, intended uh, schedule some, some something like that so i thank wanted you. to get clarity on that thank, thank you, you very much for the question thank you very much for the question always a loaded question when we talk to you <laughs> so uh two questions from you uh the first question on the role of the mentor so I think um, Jenny will be the best person to answer that. And then the second question in relation to the, um, to the scheduling, I think Roshni, you might be a good um, uh, person to answer that. So Jenny, please go ahead. Okay, thank you for the question. So um, we're not leaving the mentors and mentees in the lurch to find their own plan. We have um, key cards, one for every two week block. And in that two-week block, you will set up one meeting between yourself and your mentee. It's the, it's the mentor's responsibility to set up the meeting in consultation with the mentee. And you will then have key cards, which will be sent to you right after the session. Um, there are six key cards, one key card for each um, session that you have, which will be 
sometime within a two week period. And each key card has a theme. So for instance, one of the key cards themes is um, volunteerism and leadership. And that key card will introduce the topic and then also introduce some questions around that thing that you can think about. Both the mentor thinks about them and the mentee thinks about those things before the meeting. Sorry, I've got dogs barking in the background. So you will be provided with materials. You won't be left in the lurch. Um, if you do find the materials aren't enough for you, you can let us know. But those materials, most of them have been tried and tested by SSSI. So we're running on the back of a successful program in the past. So you will be directed. Um, you'll have those key cards to direct you um, in each in each session that you have with your mentee. And just remember the mentor takes responsibility for setting up the session in consultation with the mentee on whatever platform you decide is best for you as a player. Thank you very much. So um, for the next, for the second part of the question, we'll go to uh, Roshni for the answer. Thank you, Kavina. Um, I think Jenny covered it really well. We recommend that the mentor check with the mentee what their availability is, and then they schedule the meeting, um, ideally sending a calendar invite so that it's in everyone's calendars, and then um, the mentor and mentee will be able to proceed to meet at that time. Um, and if anyone is finding that their mentor or mentee is not showing up to meetings, or they have communicated that the meeting hasn't gone ahead, then um, please do reach out to us and we will be happy to try to support that relationship um, and find a resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so are there any other questions? Hello? Hello. Yeah. yeah, welcome. <laughs> uh, th thank you so much, uh, my friend and my brother, and uh, Jennifer, uh, Roshni, others. I'm very glad to join this meeting, and uh, really, we thank God that we have the opportunity to meet and discuss this very important uh, matter that borders on the issues of uh, professional development and the sustainability of the profession. Uh, it's one of the few things that uh, is at the back of my mind. I've spoken about this long time ago, that there is need for us to bridge the gap between the old, that's the X generation and the Y generation, so that we can have a sustainable practice. As it is now, and thank God that uh, Jenny and others are doing their best. There are so many uh, gaps between the old and the new in terms of our communication, in terms of our digital skill, in terms of our experience, in terms of our history. It's not about age only. We don't speak the same language. And uh, that disconnect has to be bridged as urgent as possible. So this is an assignment, I think most of us, or all of us, who are involved must take it with all the seriousness so that we can be able to achieve the aim of integrating the uh, profession for the betterment of uh, the whole of Africa. And I hope at the end of the exercise, that's by mid-June, I mean mid-July, uh, the result that comes out will assist us so much uh, in not only bridging the gap, but also leveraging as well as replicating these things across the whole of Africa and the globe. Uh, definitely, I believe the outcome will surely assist many of the states in Africa to update their rules and regulations for the control of Soviet practice. There are laws, which most of them has been uh, old for more than 20, 30 years. We need to do that. Also importantly, and lastly, uh, I'm not looking at this as one way traffic, communication or sharing of experience between uh, the mentor and the mentee. Definitely, we the mentors have a lot of things also to learn from the mentees. 
there's enough comfortable, I would say, uh, 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 children. I mean, the adult have a lesson to learn from the children. A lot of lessons. If not for anything, we should not be afraid of failing, but we should always get them try, get them and try again. So I wish to thank you so much, and to tell you that uh, I will give all my due time and attention for the success of this uh, program. And in particular, I'm very happy that uh, Jennifer is willing to continue on this course. And she's assured of my full support. I wish all of you a very successful endeavor as uh, we come to the wind up of, the, of this very important meeting. I uh, thank you so much. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. And, um, and I do think there are no questions in the, in the um, chat box. And it's uh, uh, a minute to the hour. And so I think this is a good time to end with the, with the nice words from uh, Sevea Kabir. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And we hope that you will keep up to the, um, oh, Roshni has something. Hi, Katie. I just noticed that there is one question around the format of the report, okay. and I thought I would um, just quickly say that um, we will send more information by email about this. Um, it will be a very short um, survey at the end after each session for both the mentor and the mentee. So we yeah. will give you that information by email. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So thank you all for joining, and we hope that you keep to the um, to the schedule as we have all agreed on. So have a nice day. Thank you. And thank Thanks you so Shaman. much, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, have bye. fun in the program. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.